In this webcast, API Enabling COBOL Applications, we will show you how to quickly and easily expose COBOL programs as a callable API, in this particular instance, as a REST service. Now let's take a look at how we would create an API from a COBOL program. We're going to take the COBOL program Empel Apple. It has two functions a list employees, and get employees detail. We're going to use our web methods platform to create an API. In this particular case, we're going to use a REST service. Um, it's just as easy to create a SOAP web service. Um, and then to validate the call into the API, we're going to use Postman. Postman is an API development tool, freely available, used to build, test, and modify APIs. To create the API for this COBOL program, we're going to return back to our Software AG Designer IDE. We're going to switch from the service creation perspective to the entire X adapter perspective. Our first step is to create a new project. We'll just call it ZShare. And from here, our first step in creating the API is to introspect the COBOL program and create what we call an IDL file. It stands for Interface Definition Language. It does the brokering between the formats from COBOL into the format expected in the REST service. So we're going to pick the IDL extractor for COBOL. It's going to go and ask me to connect to my RPC server that talks to the mainframe. This particular example, we're going to modify it just so you can see how we set that connection up. Our first thing that we do is specify what type of default interface we want to use. You can use DCOM, channel containers, uh, batch, and a variety of other options. We specify the RPC server that we're connecting to, where the mainframe is, what service we're connecting to, our credentials, and also what data set name we want to introspect for the COBOL programs. It gives us an option of actually specifying a variety of different DSNs to look into, but we're just going to pick that one. And now we're going to return to the IDL extractor, now that we've specified credentials. And it gives us three programs to choose from. We're going to pick that Empel Apple that we talked about. And again, we're going to specify how we are going to talk to that, which communication channel we're going to use, the file name that we're going to use. And from here, we're actually going to introspect the code. So the code actually has a level 88 field. So I have uh, a couple choices, list and details. So what I want to do is take that COBOL interface and define how I want it to look in my API. My first choice is the operation. I'm going to go ahead and set that as a constant. I want to do the operation list. So I want to list one API that does a list of employees. So there is no input for this. So I'm going to take the employee ID that normally would be called and suppress that out. Same thing for the employee details. I don't want to see it, so I'm going to suppress it out. And for the employees list, I don't want that input and output. I just want the API to have it as an output only field. Now, this program has two different capabilities, list employees and get employee details. So I want to create a second API interface. So I'm going to go back and do the same thing. The operation, I want to set a constant of list, I'm sorry, of details. The employee ID, I'm going to go ahead and leave that as input and output. The employee details, I'm going to map to out. The employee list, I'm going to suppress completely. Now let's look at the details of the employee details. First, surname, date of birth, and then I have a pick 100 field that is additional details all compressed together. Well, that's not very friendly, so I'm going to suppress that. 
I am going to look at the redefine of that. And I'm going to say, let's map that as out. So the annual salary, the vacation, and the language are now all going to be mapped individually as output fields. So I've created my IDL. Let's take a look at it. It shows two different programs, EMP Apple and EMP Apple One. It shows the library that it's coming from and whether things are inputs or outputs or both. From here, I want to be able to test this to make sure that I can successfully make a call through EntireX to the COBOL program and get back expected results. We give you a Software AG IDL tester. It's going to ask us which one we want to choose, and I'm going to take that first one. Now, I'm going to, since we said we wanted to do it through CICS, I am going to specify my CICS listener. I'm going to ping it just to make sure it's up and active and available. It is. And now I'm going to do a call. And it returns all those values. So I have successfully made a call from my web methods integration platform through EntireX adapter to the mainframe. Now my next step is going to be to actually publish this out as a REST service. But first we want to take a look. When I was generating those, EMP Apple and EMP Apple One are not very descriptive. So what we want to do is give those a little bit more user-friendly program names, something that the external world might understand. So we're going to take those properties. And EMP Apple, we're going to create an alias and we're going to call it list employees. And the EMP Apple one, we're going to give that an alias of get employee. So again, a little bit more friendly names. I'm not limited to my eight characters. Now the next step is to generate and publish our REST service. So with that, I'm going to right click the IDL file. I'm going to come down here and do a generate web methods connection. Um, we have a couple that are already existing here um, that we used in our previous demo, but I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new entire X adapter if you remember from the architecture. I'm also going to at the same time specify that I want to create a REST resource. I'm going to come down here, tell it what integration server package I'm going to put it in uh, and where the folder is. We are using the uh, share folder. For the connection name, I want to make it something more friendly than Apple um, so and more generic. So let's do share connection. Um, I specify, again, my mainframe, my RPC server, my credentials. And I tell it what I want to call the REST resource. So a REST resource is that top-level service that the list employees and get employee is going to live under. So I want to make this something, again, more user-friendly than uh, the COBOL program name. So I'm going to just call it employee. So my resource is going to be called a high-level employee with two services underneath, list employees and get employee. And with that, it publishes it out to the web methods platform. Let's take a quick look. We do have to do a couple housekeeping options here. So we go to our um, package. We do a quick refresh to make sure we got the latest and greatest information. I look in here, and we have a, several new objects in here. We have our share connection. So that enables that connection uh, between the mainframe and uh, the web methods platform. 
I have my employees resource that executes two services, list employees and get employee. So let's look at that employee resource here very quickly. Um, in a REST resource, you have methods that you can call. And the methods relate very typically to what we consider the CRUD actions, create, read, update, delete. Um, they use put, post, get, delete, and patch. So um, we default with our best uh, guess at it, but you might have to change that. So we're just getting the employees list. We're not doing anything else. And the same is true here. Um, because it is using an input field, um, it thinks that you might be updating it or adding it. In this particular instance, we're still just doing a simple get. So it tries to take its best guess, but you may have to make some small changes here. So we save that. And now that employee resource is out and available for use, um, and we are going to switch to our Postman API tester to actually execute this new REST service that calls the mainframe COBOL program. Now that we've created our REST API, let's go ahead and test it out. We're going to switch over to Postman. Now, I have taken the liberty of already creating the calls for this, but let's take a look at what that is. Um, the base URL for this call uh, for the list employees is our web methods platform. Then we specify the employee resource, and then we say which function we want to do, which is list employees. Now, one of the things we set up in the connection is we set up the mainframe credentials. We talked a little bit about um, how you might do that in the architecture area. Um, but we also have security at that REST resource level. So there's a whole host of options you can use here. Um, we're going to do just a simple basic authentication. Now, again, this isn't the mainframe authentication. This is the authentication um, into the REST resource. So I'm going to go ahead, do a call of that same list employees, and it returns all of the employees in a much nicer JSON format um, than our little IDL tester. Now I'm going to come over to the get employee, and you'll see it's a little bit different in that it asks for a value. Um, and let's just go pull a different value off here. So we'll pull this employee ID. So it's asking for the input, remember that we specified in the IDL. So we are going to put uh, that employee ID. Again, we have that basic authentication. We've established those parameters. And we're going to do a send. And we get uh, the results back uh, that we requested for that particular uh, employee. The employee ID gets returned, the employee details, and the additional details in a much nicer format um, than originally was provided by the COBOL program. So that is how we generated an API from a COBOL program in a few short steps. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to my colleague, Nicole Ritchie. For more information, please email us at info at softwareagov.com or visit us at www.softwareagov.com. Thank you.